Mm -hmm. A Better Way to Live, 17 rules mm -hmm. that will help you to find a better way to live. Very practical. I'd like to take a couple of those rules and read them to you. Okay. Then have you comment on them. And let's begin with rule 10. Beginning today, treat everyone you meet, friend or foe, loved one or stranger, as if they were going to be dead at midnight. Extend to each person, no matter how trivial, trivial the contact, all the care and kindness and understanding and love that you can muster, and do it with no thought of any reward. Your life will never be the same again. The, the backup chapter to that, to that rule <clears throat> tells a little of a little incident that happened to me many years ago. It used to be that when authors toured the country to promote their book, their, their publisher gave them a, a bunch of airline tickets and an itinerary and said, good luck, baby, and you were out on your own. Now they, they have uh, special publishers' representatives who meet you at the airport and take you by the hand to your hotel, and then they pick you up the next morning and they take you to your first interview and then your second. It's much easier. But anyway, back in that era, uh, I was in Nashville, and I was being driven out to WSM TV uh, to do the noon show out in the suburbs of Nashville. And uh, so the cabbie is driving me out there, and uh, such a long drive, we got to be real buddies. We're talking, I learned his name was Raymond Bright. He was a young black fella, very bright, very sharp. And so we're talking, and when we, when we pull up in front of this WSM TV's gorgeous old colonial uh, southern plantation-looking building, he said to me, sir, this is the best television station in town. And I had just been talking for the previous two days about this, this principle, because I've always stressed this principle that if you treat people as if they're going to be dead at midnight, you're going to treat them with love and caring, mm -hmm. and you're going to get that back from them. So as I was paying him, and, and halfway out of the cab, I got this whim, crazy idea, and I turned to him. I said, Ray, have you ever seen a television show? And he said, no, sir, never have. I said, I'll tell you what, it's going to take about an hour. But uh, why don't you leave the, leave the flag on, I'll pay, and you come on in with me, you can, you can watch a television show. And he just looked at me and just flipped the flag down like he wasn't charging me. And he jumped out and he walked in with me, he had a t-shirt on and a pair of blue jeans, and I introduced him to Teddy Bath, the, the host of the program, and Elaine Gannick, the producer, and they, were, they didn't say anything, but they're looking at him and they're looking at me. I said, this is my, this is my buddy. And so they, 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 they ushered him right down front. He had one of the front row seats for the show. Teddy, Teddy and Elaine and I went off to talk about what we were going to do on the show. And uh, after the program, uh, he took me downtown to autograph at Cokesbury's bookstore. And then I said, Ray, I'm hungry. He says, I know just where to take you. He says, I'm going to take you to my part of town. So he took me to this lovely old diner. And we sat down. I had the best hamburger I've ever had in my life. I was the only white person in the place. <laughs> And we had a great little meal, and when it was finished, I reached for my wallet, and this arm, this hand touched my arm. He would not let me pay. Ray dived in and paid for it, and we get out. We did two more radio shows, and he then took me back to the hotel, got my luggage, come down, he's taking me to the airport. On the way to the airport, I'm starting to fall asleep, because it had been a long day, when I suddenly hear his voice say, I ain't never going to forget today. And I said, why, Ray? He says, he says, today, for the first time in my life, I feel important. He says, you made me feel important. And uh, we, we got out to the airport, and uh, he took my luggage out of the trunk, and uh, I paid him. And uh, I guess you don't do this in Nashville, but anyway, Ray just got close to me, and he hugged me. And he was starting to cry, and he, I said, uh, I love you, Mr. Og. He's calling me Mr. Og because he just heard them call me that on a radio show. <laughs> and I said, I love you too, Ray. But I never have forgotten that, that, little, that little incident. It's just, you it know, is, it is how such, you treat people. It is such a great thing to make people feel important, to, to, to touch everybody's life in a special way, to make them feel important. And we can do that, and that's what Christmas is about. Rule 17. Realize that true happiness lies within you, and waste no time and effort searching for peace and contentment and joy in the world outside. Remember that there is no happiness in having or even in getting. 
but only in giving. Reach out, share, smile, hug. Happiness is a perfume that you cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. 